This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geek and get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Sorgatron Media Studios in the wonderful Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we got the crew here, myself a video professional, podcast uh, engineer, I guess, of sorts. Uh, I, I need to give myself a more proper title, don't I? I also don't tell people what I do every every week. Other I'm not than owner this. operator. Owner operator. Um, that's a fuzzy thing uh, because of the way the companies are laid out. But anyways, we got people with us. We got remotely from Studio C, John Chichilla. He's the uh, gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. Hey, how's it going this week? It's going good, going good. It's, it's, it's weird because as the as the time changes, it's starting to get a little dim out. It this, is this time of it day. It is. It's really it's really fussing with our our lighting in here <laughs> and everything too. Uh, but it, uh, it's everything's a little blue and dreary and and everything. Is it? it we we're, we're back to that. We're not going to see sun in Pittsburgh for like a two weeks. Uh, situation but hey at least we're done the carolinas anyways that's enough about weathercast also with us back in the studio is crazy kraus also does some things at big bank international esquire yes i do how are you today yes yes i keep forget i know every time i keep forgetting how to what all you're into over there yeah mobility mobility other mobility things at big bank yeah 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 you are the gadget gurus of of Big Bank International, so welcome to Google collectively. Cast. We have all the gadgets. Ah, uh, yes, yes. He has all the Microsoft stuff, and then uh, Chilla has all of the Samsung stuff. Actually, we were comparing how many screens are in our bags. <laughs> and I am up to seven. I must oh. say. Oh, see, I don't have a regular bag anymore since I like have an office. So oh, everything right. is just here. here. Now, how many are on my desk? I used to count how many were on my desk in my home office. I, I think I did those tweets like over a year ago. Um, I mean, now it's like, well, I have two on the laptop. I have a <laughs> uh, phone. Are we counting watches? Do you count watches as screens? Yeah, I think we, I a think smart we count. Watch. You could count. Yeah, watch you could is count a screen. Watch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I have um, four to five going at any particular time, or at least there, because... Um, Back to that iPad 3, Chilla. It's never going to die, man. I've been watching a lot of stuff on it lately while I work. Nice. <laughs> it's like the hey, Energizer old, old tech, Bunny. Old tech is, is, is not always bad, bad or yeah, obsolete. No, it, no. It, always, it always has a purpose. Dude, absolutely. If it, it's, it's so great. We could take like, If you can get stuff working on an iPad 1, and the only thing is since it's like I think iOS 5 is hard to get some of the apps going, um it's fine i've been watching wwe network and i think uh hbo might still work on it i uh amc did not work when i tried it today hulu's fine uh netflix is fine so there's, as a, there's a consumption lot device mm-hmm. i would completely agree with you yeah if you're gonna create anything be careful yeah <laughs> there's no, no 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 well and i can also check my email pretty well on it too, right so uh, but anyways, we get into that every once in a while. But this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.com. And I'm just realizing I need to fix awesomecast.net. Sorry about that, guys. We did have a transfer that went wrong. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can hit us up there at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, at awesomecast on the Twitter. And please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and uh, watch uh, video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And please rate and subscribe us uh, over there, like I said. And, and that does help us get in front of more eyeballs and share the Awesome Cast and help us grow check us out every tuesday on the facebook page at 7 p.m eastern time you can join us in the chat room just like i know amanda uh narcissi of bold pittsburgh has been hanging out with us and also uh alex out in california dave potter of the tiny shutter podcast is joining us as well uh from microsoft the new skype update trust us this time huh (laughs) from dave out there but anyways 
<laughs> uh, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, if if uh, we'll get to that in a second. But anyways, you can also check us out. We are also uh, carried on RiversEdgePGH.com every Saturday at 9 a.m. You can catch the latest show or weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time at the 405media.com. You'll have the latest awesome cast as well, so you can catch up with us. Thank you to our streaming partners helping get the awesome cast out there. And if you want to be of our studio, part of our studio audience, or if you're interested in advertising with the show, hit up uh, uh, producer Missy at awesomecastofsorgatronmedia.com. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys at the Coffee Club $5 level are going to get a, a look at DudeCast we were trying out here before the show, uh, since it's all dudes in here today. Uh, Coffee Club $5 members, uh, Matt Weller and John Dickey Tagore. And fan of the show level, or fan of the show $1 level, thank you very much to our longtime supporter, Mike Fedor, over there. Again, patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And I love this. I, I, I think I think Chilla and I have very similar things going on uh, with our selections this week. What do you got, Chilla? Oh, we, we muted you. I think he's on your end. I muted me. There Sorry. It is. I, I had to cough earlier and I didn't want to blow out the mic. <clears throat> so mine is the Samsung Smart Things tracker. If you're familiar with the little tile squares um, that a lot of people people leverage. The interesting thing about tile is right, it's Bluetooth LE. So mm-hmm. someone has to be running the tile. If you lose something, it either has to be within Bluetooth distance or Someone with a tile app has to walk past your device and then it'll pull in, check into their centralized database and it reports in so you can figure out where that thing was last seen, whether it's attached to your phone, whatever. So Samsung, uh, the, who owns SmartThings, have, has released the, the SmartThings tracker and it's actually going to use LTE-based cellular network. Wow. To keep track of the device, so no longer are you are you uh, subject to the probably approximately thirty ish feet of Bluetooth LE, um, depending on walls and whatnot. You can now track anything anywhere with one of their little tags. What I didn't see today was what the battery lasts up to a week and is water resistant. Um, it sounds like this will be both on AT&T and Verizon networks, so both GSM and CDMA networks, or, uh, with, and it's going to be using a low-power LTE network um, that's specifically designed for devices like this. What I think this is good and bad, right? So I can put this in my backpack, and if someone were to steal it, they're probably not going to notice it in there, and I can track my bag. Obviously, I have to charge the thing Every week, not that big of a deal. What kind of freaks me out is these things are small enough that if someone slipped it into my bag without me knowing it, they now pretty much low jacked me and can track me anywhere, anytime, and and whatnot. And that kind of, it's kind of the double edged sword of privacy versus, hey, this is cool tech that I want to track something. Mm -hmm. Um, I could see, you know, putting this in your kid's backpack going to school or or something along those lines. But I don't know. Or in your wife's purse when you want to know what she's (laughs) doing at night. Uh, Man, there's a lot of options for those kinds of things, huh? Yeah, and and, and it's a little different when you go from, oh, I got to be within 30 feet of the device to keep track of it or tabs on it. It kind of has to figure out where it's located based on, I think it's ping time and, signal strength across multiple directions this is hey it'll report into the carrier network and i can find this person anytime anywhere uh, davis chat uh, uh, davis in the chat room saying um it, it, can we get it in black and call it a bat tracker <laughs> we I, and that's where i'm wondering like are we going to see stuff like think about it i'm sure the guts of that thing aren't that that large i'm sure you, people are going to be be using 3D printers and printing all kinds of fun cases oh, for these be fun. things. And really, well, you can do that thing. Like you'd <clears> always <throat> see, like the spider tracker or the bat tracker or something in uh, in, in in the uh, uh, comic books and movies and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's that's completely what we can do. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. You could throw it. I mean, 
you can throw it in the trunk of your car, right? And mm-hmm. track your car wherever it goes. I, I, the the to me the ideas are limitless. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Is it going to? Is this going to create a privacy concern? I think no more than everything else that's connected to our devices, right? I mean, uh, you and I and and Ron here are are both wearing two devices that track our location at all times between our watch and our phone. But the difference is if someone slips like a find my eye, like start sharing my find my iPhone, you get those notification prompts and whatnot that says, hey, you're sharing your your location with people you XYZ. Don't get reminders. You do not, yeah. Not you like down the line if you like did it and forgot about it, right? Yeah. So Well, I I don't know, because I think someone shared their location with me and like it showed something on their contact for a while. And the mm-hmm. same thing I think in Goo in Google Maps. So I, I don't that, to me this is a little more well, turn, be a little more discreet with it. Kind of going along with this, you mentioned trial. My awesome thing of the week is something that they were talking about on MacBreak Weekly last week I kind of liked. And we talked about tile a bit. I still need to get several so I can just attach them to everything my mother owns so she stops losing things. Um, but uh, they have a pretty cool Slim Walnut. Uh, wall, wallet? Yes, a Slim Wallet uh, from uh, Nomad. If you go to ho- hellonomad.com, it's an $80 wallet. And they have a thin um, tile. Uh, tile tracker, the the ones that you see in the stores and advertise and everything in the wallet itself. So that's not bad. Did you get one kind of like already kind of ready made for it? But also you can also get the thin thing, the thin tile and and slip it into a wallet in general too. So, um, but it's pretty cool that, that that you can do that on such a small scale at this point. It's a stealth pocket. <laughs> so, um, and it develops a rugged patina. What? Just go to the last picture oh. in the thing. It's like how uh, leather kind of wears. Yeah. It does, it does look kind of nice. Where is that? Where is that? Oh, yeah. It's the last picture here. And just like, yeah, this is what's going to look on day one. This is what it looks like on day 100. So it's, 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 for those on audio, it, it, it's a brown leather wallet. <laughs> but it's got a bunch of pockets. Apparently, it's very expandable. And they just kind of show how dark it's going to get um, over time. Uh, and and use right and it's got that little thin tile tracker in there and uh yeah so if you're not stuffing a lot in your wallet it's probably going to be pretty good for you what's the battery life on these things i think they're i don't know i'm honestly the, not sure. what what's the battery life on a tile on a, yeah i thought it was like a year so they're okay. using that like mm-hmm. uh 20 30 32 watch battery or something in it you know those yeah. Thin quarter kind of size things or something. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, okay. Wait. Here's a. I just found a video about replacing your battery in your <laughs> tile. So yeah, it's it's a watch battery. Okay. Um, situation there. So let's see if I can get. So the the tile claims a battery life over a year, mm-hmm. but they can't guarantee it. Obviously, devices can sit on shelves and whatnot. They can't so they give you twelve months. Worry free warranty starting at your activation date. It's not bad. No. Not bad at all. That's not, that's not bad at all. No. It's a, it's a little watch battery. Which one of those? Yeah. What is it? Like and CR? You can, you can, and you can get each of those for less than 20 bucks at this point. So it's kind of. You know, fairly replaceable. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how easy that is because it looks like you got to kind of pry this thing apart and everything to get it replaced. But, I mean, it, it, it looks like the same watch battery that's in my Pokemon Go. So, that's should be fine. So If it's good enough for Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. But oh, wait till I get to so the Pokemon story later. So, how often do you lose something and it's within 30 feet of you versus how often do you lose something and it's... It's not within 30 feet. And the, where I go with this is, oh, uh-oh. I, I got to the T-stop this morning, and I realized I don't have my AirPods. Mm-hmm. Did I leave them in the car? Did I leave them at home? I haven't used them since yesterday afternoon. Did I leave them at the office so when I get there, they'll be well, there? I thought the tiles tracked back if somebody else... If someone else it. with a tile app yeah. walks past it. And think I me, mean, we all know how iOS works, right? The apps yeah. can go to sleep. Right. Um, but so you hope they're walking around with See. Android devices, but <clears throat> but then their battery's dead. 
So, <laughs> oh, oh. oh, ow! Was that a sick burn? Yeah, I think yeah, it might, might have been. been. Sorry. Yeah. Um, wow. So we're getting yeah, froggy. We're getting froggy within 24 hours of that Apple announcement, apparently. Yeah. I, so I, I don't know. Like I find myself using because I use. <laughs> this is going to sound really sad. Um, I use the Find My Eye whatever app. It's I find my iPhone, but it tracks all your devices, your watch, your AirPods, your MacBook, your iPad, whatever. Um, I'm amazed at how often I use that to figure out, oh, where did I last have and use that device? Even for the Wi-Fi based devices, usually they're within shot of Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So, and maybe this is one of those things where as we get more Internet of Things with Bluetooth capability. Those things will echo or, or pay, the tile devices will ping off them. That will then get you back to a wireless connection that will then be able to, to track it. But I don't know. I find myself using these types of services when the device, when I, where, when I, I think the device isn't anywhere near me, but I can't remember where I last had it. See, I was under the impression that these devices gave you an alert when they went out of range. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those things like you could put it on your keys and then if you were at dinner and you walked away from the table and your keys are there, your phone would suddenly beep and go, hey, you're leaving your keys behind or something like that. And that I could definitely see that being a, a, of use. Um, I think it's one of those things that you'll have to, mileage will vary, right? I take my phone up to bed my keys stay downstairs am i going to get pinged when i go to bed every night because i'm out of range for my keys Mm -hmm. um so i i I, yeah i don't know it's probably not the perfect there's there's so many different use cases and ways that this you could use this or where it would become hey i want to be warned but i'm going to be warned multiple times per day because i'm probably far enough away from my keys quite often. Right. Right. Well, I'll be interested to see. Um, I, I just put a tile in my cart on Amazon. I, I, I want to get one and finally play with this and actually see how it works because um, it's long overdue. They're everywhere now. So, uh, Kraus, what is your my, awesome thing? My awesome thing is um, this company called Impossible Aerospace. They were kind of their startup in California, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, looks like they have ties back to Tesla somehow, or maybe they were part of Tesla and then they moved on. So their their initial thing is they want to build a better drone that won't last twenty to forty minutes of flight time to two to four hours of flight time. And the way they want to accomplish this is instead of building a drone and adding a battery, they're going to build the drone out of batteries. Huh. And they have a little, uh, little, if you scroll down through the article, you can actually see a little, like, uh, there it is right there. So The, the transparent one with all the... Yeah, so clear. literally... That looks really cool. It's made out of, ba- like, the fuselage is the batteries. So it looks like, it, it, it appears like they took a bunch of double A's... <laughs> And, and built them into like the structure that yes. they can be all, all around it. So literally, the 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 fuselage of the craft is the batteries. Which, if you think about it, it's it's a pretty ingenious idea. Mm-hmm. But so I just thought that was interesting. And then they actually say they want to bring it to people movers eventually, also. So you know, drones for human beings. That's their long-term goal, but I just thought it was a, a very neat and interesting idea. Yeah, because that's a big man. I've been seeing drones. I've been I've been in Washington, and I've seen drones. Like apparently, they're from that uh, that that uh, those condos around Gateway Center, and they're like you can see them up there controlling it because it came back to the cradle once, and they were flying it all over downtown and wow. all, over the, all over the station square. Like really, they dropped like right in front of us. I'm There's like, got to be a violation of aerospace somehow downtown, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you would think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels like uh, I don't know if we're supposed to be doing that right now. So you know, this is a commercial application, obviously. But like they said, you know, most drones today you get 
20 to 40 minutes of flight time, they want to, you know, turn that around and do two to four hours of flight time. Mm -hmm. And I guess if, if, you know, your job revolves around using drones, this would be huge for you, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, no, that was big because I've been at at, uh, shoots where there was a drone person and, you know, they'd be able to shoot like it was an all day event. They'd be able to shoot for, you know, 20 minutes and then they ask the the battery up or, you know, change the batteries and everything to keep going. So it's interesting. Well, you know, you know what doesn't need batteries? Zombies. And you know who's really, really into zombies? Our friends at the Scare House. There's actually a lot of really cool zombie related things going to happen this year. Of course, going to be in. And a lot of celebration of the Night of the Living Dead and George Romero here in Pittsburgh. But uh, one of them uh, that's that's getting into the zombie fair are zombie experts at the Scare House. Uh, we may not be the pros when it comes to scaring people, but uh, we do we do know someone who is. Scare House even has a podcast to talk about all sorts of things uh, in the business of haunted attractions. That uh, part of here of the uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. You can check out more, including the new promo video for uh, the uh, the newest attraction, the Pittsburgh Zombies uh, returns uh, to the Scare House. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think you, you you see a little bit of Dutters as a zombie as part of this promo if you go check it out. Uh, and they've even they've even done some new things with the other haunts that are uh, making a comeback this year. Definitely recommend it. Great stuff. Even if you don't like haunted houses but are interested in sort of uh, theatrics and special effects and technology and what goes into uh, attractions like this, go check out the Scarehouse podcast and check out the Scarehouse weekly uh, every week on the Scarehouse podcast. Um, Facebook page. Uh, I see. I see. Ron, you're 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 shaking your head at that over there. You're going right. You're coming no, with me. Come I'm on. Just not into we gotta that hit anymore. the scare house, man. I'm too old. Yeah. I'm too just, old. Come on. Yeah. So, so I think I I posted a picture in the Slack over the weekend. I was at one of those uh, costume shops for the pop up around Halloween, mm-hmm. and they're they're prepping two sections of the store for all to be Fortnite costumes. I'm, I'm just really surprised the scare house isn't doing like zombie Fortnite people that have been killed in game. You'd be surprised. Have, have, have come back from the dead. I, I, I've been like, Hey, Hey, I arcade's kind of a cool idea. <laughs> yeah. Right guys. Maybe in 2019. Uh, anyways. Hey, I went to uh, Amanda's in the chat room and uh, I mentioned the, the hello nomad.com that has that wallet. Uh, apparently she said that the, the, uh, the iPhone cables over there are pretty cool too. Like they look like they're that more rugged kind of like cloth wrapped um, look to them. Uh, the, so, the braided, yeah, the braided ones. Uh, they have a lot of cool stuff. They have cables, they have straps, they have uh, power for Apple Watch and everything. Uh, this is a pretty cool site. Look at this, like kind of cool stand and charger is, uh, situation going here for like forty bucks. That's, that that look really cool on a nightstand. Um, so uh, some some cool that's that's worth looking at. Check out hellonomad.com for a lot of cool gear, uh, especially especially for iOS devices. Um, so, haha, you mentioned Pokemon Go earlier. Let me tell you about my favorite video I saw this week from Brandon. You see this? Yes, did you see I this? Did. did you see the Pokemon Superbike? That's what I'm calling it. So, this is a grandfather, apparently. Uh, I believe this is in China. Uh, it's, he's 70 years old. He uses a bat- bag of batteries, and there are several, what is that, four, five, he's six, seven, eight, nine? He's catching them all. He has nine. Uh, smartphones attached to his bike, all playing Pokemon Go. Uh, he he believes it helps him fend off his Alzheimer's disease. Um, he says he stays out playing until 4 a.m. sometimes. Uh, and so he's just mass playing the Pokemon Go uh, and a really cool concoction that that guy got going on over there. Did they say, is he using the same account on all the devices or mm-hmm. is it separate accounts? Okay, it is... What's that? So it's separate accounts. Oh, he's doing it on separate accounts? Yeah, you can't because you can't log in simultaneously across devices. Jeez. It's a it's a it's so it's a it's a it's actually a terms and conditions violation when you sign up for Pokemon Go because they don't want people cheating where like me, you and Ron uh, share the account and then we try we're to all like trying. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm I'm surprised, honestly, in general, that 
there isn't some question about, again, about the terms. I wonder if we'll see a change to the terms of service for Pokemon because he could be gaining a leg up on other people now that they have the trading in place. <laughs> Think about it. The oh. best characters, he could all trade down to a single... To a single, mm-hmm. one of his single player. Hmm. Interesting. I, I mean, the rarity of this occurring is, is a lot less rare than... And multiple it, people sharing. It says he's 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 spending a thousand dollars a month on services and in in game per- purchases. Oh my Not God. to mention his cellular. Uh, bill. Yeah, I, I think oh, that's. Yeah. I, I, no, I think that was included in that. Um, so, holy crap! Brandon also Brandon always shares the videos with us from, off of the Facebook. Um, so, uh, Brandon also shared with us. This was great. How about Netflix and snack? Uh, this was hold on. Let me let me. Bump Is this, this instead up of Netflix and chill? Ne- no, yeah, it's uh, Netflix and Munch. So this is a a a snack bowl with an iPhone holder. Uh, I saw this. <laughs> it's the uh, melon bowl, M E L O N bowl, uh, and uh, yeah, it, you can put your sunflower seeds as they're showing here, or whatever little snacky things, uh, and your phone's right there. I feel like I'm going to get like cheesy poof stains on my phone, and that's going to be really embarrassing. Uh, but uh, you can go get it. Um, it's uh, part of uh, over on hyperbargains.com, apparently. So that's a cool little thing. It's only 10 bucks, guys. Did you see it has a place to keep the kernels? Or the yeah, parts you got it does. Like underneath, there's like a little... There's like a, a trap door. Yeah, it's like a trash thing. So like, like you know, your... your Bones. Yeah, your, your bones? <laughs> well, you're going to... <laughs> I don't know if it's big enough. You can just put, wings. You can yeah. put a uh, thing of wings. Like you need a bigger one, right? Uh-huh. To get a little more. We need the American sized one. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is very European. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really bummed out. It isn't like a selfie stick where it can like hold the phone a little bit off, so you you do have more room. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, also, we have here. Then uh, these are all from the uh, Awesome Cast Facebook group. You guys can join, share stories like this that we can include on the show. Um, Dave Potter has been stalking me here at the studio. Uh, <laughs> he says, uh, for Google Maps, if you uh, get walking directions, it will give you an elevation change. For example, he uh, he he says from the bottom of Crane Avenue to Sorgatron Media Studios, Crane Avenue is the or not or Canton Avenue. I'm sorry, is the steepest uh, street we just had. We just had a big uh, uh, sign dedication down there about that fact and everything. Uh, that video is on, over on the Beachview uh, Revitalization um, Advisory Group uh, page that we did a few, little bit ago. Um, but uh, uh, apparently, uh, it looks like it, it it underestimates the elevation changes, unfortunately, um, coming from uh, uh, our studio here. Uh, so, like it says, it says that we're going up 210 feet. From the bottom of Canton Avenue, and that's the bottom of Coast. If you're if you're familiar with the area, and and we're a very Pittsburgh neighborhood with hills. So in order to get from, so anybody that came here had to climb 200 feet to get here, at least because you came from Banksville Road, you yeah. came from the other side of the hill, and everything like that. But um, it, it's pretty cool because there, there's a little thing. <laughs> um, there's a little. I love I love at the bottom. There's the elevation. Like how much of the elevation going up there, right? Um, and it says you can go down 30 feet at a certain point. Oh, I guess if you go up up Crane Avenue. No, it's Hampshire. That doesn't make sense entirely. Um, but also a caution walking. I love walking directions may not always reflect real, real world conditions. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's a cool uh, addition they have on there on Google Maps if you guys are walking. And very helpful in cities like Pittsburgh, I'm sure. Um, when you could be like, oh, it's just three blocks away. And 100 feet up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is one that Riz put in there. Uh, I think mostly so So um, uh, Katie was aware. Valve has approved the first uncensored porn game on Steam. Now, there was a little bit of an issue uh, a bit ago when there was some... They were blocking some erotic visual novels. Um, like ne- Negligee is the game that they uh, approved here uh, back in July. And there was some, some c- censorship issues. So they finally decided... Hey, we're going to put it out there. Uh, We think the context of how content is presented is important, says Valve. Uh, Giving a developer a place to describe and explain what's in their game gives them even more information. So, yeah, they're they're opening that up, and uh, you can get your naughty games on Steam now. You know, as the biggest 
developer, or I'm sorry, not developer, not publisher, store, game store, I guess. Distributor? Distributor, Distributor yeah. Distributor, yeah, that's what um, I it's a, it, You know, they're in line with, um, um, I mean, I think you can compare them now to, and they're probably even bigger than the Xbox and the PlayStation digital stores, right? Uh, would, who have a tighter? I don't think you can get adult only games on any of those stores. Yeah, I don't think so. so. Uh, it's an interesting choice, and I don't know. Maybe I mean these are games that you can get anywhere and just play on a PC, anyways. Too are they bigger than like EB? Oh, uh, they have to be <laughs> bigger than who? Uh, I, 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 okay, Electronics Boutique is not around for one reason. <laughs> well, you know, they all got to be bigger than EB. You mean GameStop? GameStop. Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah, I'm they old. have to be. They they're not big. You think they, they sell more, more games than, than Amazon does? No, not Amazon, but still. Um, but even actually, when you buy games on Amazon, Although half the that's time not you're getting electronic distribution. You're getting a Steam oh, code. No, no, no. You're getting codes. You can oh, get codes true. off Amazon that's now. That's true. Uh, so that so they are still kind of involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's Steam games. I know you can get like my. You know, when you get the consoles, you you can get just codes too. Um, let me do. I don't know what's a, what's a what's a good what's a PC game. I'll just p- type in Quake and see what comes up. Um, I guess that new Quake is not exact. How about Overwatch? Um, well, here's a CD for the PC of the original <laughs> Quake. All right, maybe that wasn't a good choice. Overwatch. Let's try Overwatch. That seems like something a little more appropriate. No, that's a comic book. Nope, that's the Xbox version. <laughs> Overwatch PC. Uh, the PC version. There's oh PC download now. Now, when you get something like Overwatch... It's going to come from there, yeah. It's going to come from Blizzard, so that's Battle.net, which isn't even in that. So it's still even fractured a little bit from there. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Anyways, there's some some game stuff for you. Uh, <laughs> we, we talked more about that than I expected to. All right, guys. You know what? We're also going to talk about a little more. Our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our good friends there, friends down there always hook us up, and uh, we're supporting them. They're a Beachview original right up the street, right on Broadway here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in the city limits here. And, of course, they have expanded their service, their pizza goodness service all across town. PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, when is that? They're probably ending here up here pretty soon. Do they make the playoffs? I don't know. They still run through the winter. Anyways, and uh, Carnegie PA, as well as the east end of the city. Go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Let them know the awesome cast sent you and their PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show for a good, good long time. All right. Uh, Chilla, no, what you... What 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 is setting a precedent for uh, tech announcements here? So so, and I'm really surprised because if you've ever watched the the Apple keynotes, they're extremely picky and strict about what devices you can stream on. Like on for for a while, it had to be an Apple device with the Safari browser, or it was like we're only streaming this to the Apple TV. I think they did for, for one year, a long time ago. Um, they've ex- recently expanded that to, I think windows 10 devices with the edge browser. So it's they're They're really picky about how you consume their content. And I'm guessing it has to do with their CDN and a number of other things that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause they probably want that viewing experience to be as good as possible. They're going to be streaming on Twitter. Now, I didn't get, I'm not going to lie, I didn't get to read um, the entire article, but it sounds like if if you're using Twitter, they'll be using their live stream technology, and you can watch through any browser, any client, anything um, to watch via Twitter. What makes me wonder is, is this going to be the new way we can consume a multitude of tech announcements. Are we going to see this from the Google keynote, from the Microsoft keynote, from the Facebook keynote? Well, you probably won't see it from the Facebook keynotes that want you on Facebook. But I just thought it was interesting of how they're trying to spread their audience um, and make this keynote much more consumer-ish. Mm-hmm. Like I always felt like the keynotes were kind of techish. Now it's going to be as easy. Everyone on Twitter is going to see their see this in their feed. Well, as Twitter is definitely trying to be the the place for this is the news now. 
this fits for it because this is going to be the thing everybody's going to be talking about anyway. So it's probably a bigger coup for a coup for Twitter than anything. And mm-hmm. you have to wonder because didn't Twitter for a while there weren't they streaming Thursday night football? Mm-hmm. So did mm-hmm. they prove quote unquote prove something to the the apples of the world that? Hey, we can do this on a large scale. And haven't they been very anti Facebook as well, Apple? So being in bed with their com- competitor, yeah, quote unquote, that, it's of Twitter. Possible. So I, I think that all kind of lends into it in the end, right? So um, no, that's cool. I, I it, it's nice to see that that's a pretty that's a good um, that that's that's expanding because it was always like, oh, I need to go use it at Mac or use my Apple device or use Safari or something like that was always a pain in the butt. Um, but, uh, no, that's, or that's you cool. watched somebody live. Yeah. Or somebody live streamed it somewhere else. Like yeah. you to watch the twit feed where they're talking over the stream, which you know, sometimes I just want to watch the stream. Right. So, um, the punditry has been a little distracting lately. Uh, so, or you can find an Apple store that's has a giant screen that might be, or might not be, um, displaying it tomorrow so is that where you're going tomorrow yeah that's where i'm going tomorrow <laughs> are you serious <laughs> yeah actually yeah, i'm going to south hills so nice yeah. um i hope that was public uh but <laughs> <laughs> it will be tomorrow it will be tomorrow <laughs> yeah. as long as the power doesn't go out there no i think it is i think it is so um this man is yelling at me in the chat room uh <laughs> <laughs> but anyways no um yeah oh no she does he said it in the chat room so we're good <laughs> we'll be streams in south hills village tomorrow at one as long as the power is back on hey, wait is this still off out there they had a power problem on uh on monday apparently and i don't know i don't know if that's so monday or sunday I, don't know, I think it was i thought it was monday that she posted that um and this is also the same apple store that that a a a pipe burst i believe of the fire suppression system like right in front of the apple store and flooded it i think so um i guess they're they're rolling but uh that's all that's great i actually um i I was telling uh kraus beforehand um i I have a mac mini that i'm going to try to get fixed and i I, it's like a 2011 i know they're not going to fix it or i'm not going to be able to afford them to fix it and they may not even have the parts but i just want to know what's wrong with it so i can go to i fix it and take the next step or just give up on it um because i haven't found it's beeping weird anyways uh, somebody 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 who knows is going to tell me tomorrow what i can do with that thing and i love i'm not dragging a giant imac in there that's fun too uh <laughs> you know if i wear the right pants i can fit in a mac mini in my pocket if you wear the right pants that's a heck of a setup. That's a large <laughs> pocket. Well, yeah, I mean, like, 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 kind of the hot topic Jinko jeans kind of things, right? And I think I got some fairly large pockets and so in my cargo. So, anyways, that's a big pocket. Uh, yeah, that's a big pocket. Or you should get those. Um, um, what was it? The tactical, There's a joke there. Somewhere. The tactical ones where, where I know Andy Nako gets those where you can stick an iPad in his back pocket, like a full size iPad. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I need some of that. If it takes that, then you can just be like, well, I got like, why'd the, why'd the, why'd the metal detector go off? I have like three uh, Mac minis in my in my pants. So then we're going to start counting screens on your body. Yes. How many are you carrying in your pants? How many screams are in your pants right now, sir? <laughs> Anyways. Oh, this went off. And I think we might have a show title out of that, too. Uh, Ron, what's, uh, what, what do you want to talk about here? You have a couple of things lined up. Uh, we could talk about Fortnite. Uh, 15 million installs on 15 Android. 15 million. Jeez. That's a lot of unsafe Androids. That's a lot of unsafe Androids. But, you know, ah. the numbers don't lie, so they must be doing something right. That is true. Although, I got to say, I don't know about anybody else out there in the world, but I have the Google Pixel 2 XL. Mm-hmm. And I have yet to be able to play this game successfully not, from that device. It's a year old phone, and and not a slouch when it came out, right? Yes. So that's a that's yeah. You know, <clears throat> Does it stutter? Like, what's the yeah? It's a it stutter. Running? It's a stutter. I mean, it, it could be the internet connection. I don't know, but every time I've thought, and actually, it's been t- at least twice here. I've mm-hmm. thought, oh. Let me give it a try again, and it just, it just, it, it can't keep up. 
I, it's, it's got to be the phones because I, I, I was telling him beforehand, like I've seen some people playing uh, Pokemon Go and they can't keep up with that, you know, but there's some pretty mm-hmm. good 3D. I mean, they're running on, I think they're running on it, maybe Unity Engine or something for that. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's, it's weird that that happens. Well, we've had this conversation before. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I got another Fortnite story for you. Are you ready for Fortnite themed Nerf guns? Oh, heck yes. They just had the announcement. There's nothing visual to check out for it, but uh, there was an announcement over on Engadget that uh, the Fortnite Blasters um, are being added to uh, uh, ner- uh, Nerf's uh, um, lineup. Uh, so there will be Nerf versions of guns that you find in um, in the game. Um, and also, they, they, they found out, I guess earlier this year, they also announced that there's going to be um, guns based on overwatch uh-huh. so nerf getting very video gamey here uh with this so that's, that's kind of cool to see well have you seen nerf. the trend on youtube with the the youtube uh creators having nerf arsenals oh yeah we would christopher watches those non-stop yeah they're youtubers that have l- l- rooms closets where it's Nerf guns hanging in every position on the wall, it, and they're using you know how like you you see that that pegboard that people put in their garages to hang up tools. Oh yeah, with the little pegs off of it. With right? the little pe- yeah, that's what they're they're lining their walls of these rooms with is those pegboards, and then they use the same hooks like they would for tools, mm-hmm. but they have like a Nerf arsenal, and it is utterly ridiculous, and I and costly. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! I just found this one. It's just I just found I just typed in Nerf Arsenal on, on YouTube, and it's my Nerf Yars Arsenal. And well, what, what, what's scary is the first lineup here. They just look like they're assault rifles. Like I didn't know they did realistic looking guns. And it, it or says, they, they they may have painted them. They may have. Or they're, they're, off, yeah. or they're off brand. That could be. That could be it. Yeah. But look at all those Nerf rifles. Jeez. Oh yeah, that's a big deal now. That guy is ready to. Assault with annoyance with all those guns. But imagine picking up the darts when you're done. Oh. What well, and my cousins, they, they had a pretty big arsenal. They actually used to put their initials on their darts because all the kids would come over with their darts and then there would be a fight of Who's no, that's my dart, no, that's my yeah. dart. Um yeah, so it's a so there's a big deal around this I mean, and, and th- 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 we actually uh, th- i wish i would have, have bought a couple but we, we, i've been looking at the um star wars themed nerf guns so they have han solo's blaster um the they have Trooper. captain phasma's blaster yeah. um Jyn urso's blaster so there's a number what, i can't remember what's the the female character from the new solo movie i don't know how to pronounce her oh, name i don't remember her name now quinn Cura or whatever it is, um, they had her blaster. So there's, I know they were doing the Star Wars one. So it doesn't surprise me that they're doing Fortnite and uh, and Overwatch. Well, I'm telling you right now, my nephew Colin is 12 years old, all into Fortnite. He will probably own at least more than one <laughs> of these Fortnite. Oh, a little bit of you should, everything. For, for, you should go to the the. Um, spirit stores or whatever they are for Halloween because they have the Fortnite hand grenade. They have a bunch of the different um, pick axes. Oh, do they? Yeah, they, they're slowly releasing Halloween costumes. Um, so, yeah, check out your local oh, okay. I'll definitely Halloween have to make shop. A trip out there. Go, go the day after Halloween. It'll make good Christmas presents. Yeah, there you go. There is Fortnite everything. I'm sure there's Fortnite everything. Uh, anyway. yeah, there's snow cones. So. So there's snow cones, yeah, on the beach. Um, so Lyft uh, has uh, has their first electric scooters out in Denver. So uh, we've been seeing a lot of these kind of a, a rental electric scooter kind of ride sharing kind of things going on. This is the first one that Lyft has uh, uh, gotten into. Um, so, and this is... Um, you know, geez, you know, this is something that you, we've seen electric bikes. Um, this is for 
uh, you know, that kind of last few miles when you need kind of a short distance and especially in a more bikeable city, like oh, we'll just say certain sections of this city. Right. Um, there was actually a comment from uh, Zach Fell, a friend of the show over at the Metal Edge. Uh, they have things like this down there in Atlanta. Uh, they're, they're weird, but a cool concept for a flat price. So um, I think you're just going to see these a little bit. I mean, we have bikes here. We have the city bikes, and they have a New York City as well. And I think we, I think we did. They're talk scooters. About, they're now. scooters now yeah. too. That's right, the Scooby sco- scooters. Scooby, yeah. yes. Um, so this is this is rolling out now. There's, you're going to see a little bit of competition with this too. Yeah, but don't these things kind of get um, become eyesores? They're like you hear the horror stories. In some cities where they're just all over the place. Yeah, there was a, something about San Francisco. They they pay people to go collect all the the scooters that have been left about. I yeah. guess. So, and I imagine these have to be low jacks so they can find them, right? They have to be. Well, the, I, I, what what surprises me if you it, the the rental bikes that are around Pittsburgh and I I think I first saw them in in Philly. Um, those you have to return back to one of the kind of parking stations right 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 there's there's fees and whatnot involved yeah i'm surprised they haven't figured that part out right if you don't return it Mm -hmm. you keep racking up the bill until you do or or something along those lines i don't know is it like when you when you don't take back your library book and it just racks it up until like hey you just owe us the price this 12 times yeah Yeah, exactly so The, the, the difference is typically the your library book isn't directly linked to your bank account via your phone. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Where Lyft is directly billing. You know, that could be a solution for the library. It, it makes sense, right? I mean, but that's a whole other system in terms of use and everything that I'm sure they probably don't want to get into. Um, Kraus, tell me about the smart, smart speakers in the U.S. Yeah, I read this article. and Now, I'm, I'm not real sure about the source. Because they're quoting Adobe, and I didn't realize Adobe was a big uh, bean counter. But mm-hmm. they're saying by the end of 2018. Oh no, there's a there's a data. There, Adobe's got like this data arm. Okay, that, I, that, I, that, that I creeps, wasn't aware. It creeps out every once in okay. a while, and I think I think they're trying to get people to use their their deep data stuff. I feel like I heard a story about that, but anyways. But anyway, yeah, they um. They're saying that by the end of you know, this Christmas season, there is a potential for half of all U.S. homes to have a smart speaker of some type in it. Mm-hmm. Which, if you think about how long these smart speakers have been on the market, that's quite an impressive thing. They were talking about right now, I think we're at 32%, mm-hmm. which uh, up from 20, 28% in December... Mm-hmm. Which I again, I was just very impressed by the whole idea of, wow, half of all U.S. homes are going to have one of these things in them. It, it and that stat's interesting too because there was some stat that came out like a month ago that wasn't about the the number of people that actually had a smart speaker, but it was more about what they used it for, and it was something like thirty or forty percent of smart smart speaker owners use it daily and the primary utilization is to control smart home devices. Mm -hmm. So to me, that means that one out of every two people will have one of these devices and one out of every two of those. So one in 25% of people will be controlling a smart home appliance with a smart speaker in their house Mm -hmm. by year end. That's impressive. And they're saying um, in this article, they don't say what they were using, but they said 71% of the owners say that they use the speaker at least once a day. That's that's a pretty good usage. And that could be even if it's just like me. I'm always saying, you know, hey, hmm, play some music. Right. So that's use. And See, I even if I don't deep dive much more than that. So, and, so Kraus, do you have – you have smart home equipment, don't you? Yes. Controlled with uh, okay, Google G Man or yeah, G yeah okay so but and so when you're at someone else's house or when you're 
uh, traveling, do you find it to become an expectation? Like you wish wherever you were at had that same type of capability? Do you miss it or is it something you're just, oh, well? No, because I even use it in the car with my phone. Mm-hmm. Right. It, yeah, and, and that's my point is I feel like it's addictive and it becomes, once you have this technology, yes. it becomes expected. I would so agree. So um, I, I would expect this growth curve to be like a hockey stick, right? Mm-hmm. Slow, gradual increase. And then I think we'll see that the, the blade of the hockey stick and it just skyrockets. Because the devices, there's low barrier to entry from cost. They're not hard to set up. Um, and for those people that aren't uh, ultra paranoid, um, it's, it's, a, it's useful. Sounds good. I agree. Awesome. Hey, guys. I uh, want to give a shout-out to our friend, uh, Alex Cars. Uh, he's putting together a puzzle of design and media from briefing, uh, I'm sorry, from branding to print to digital products. He can do logos, merchandise, websites, and a photo and video projects. Check him out, alexandercars.com or alexcars.media. He does a lot of work here with us here at the Sorgatron Media Psychic Media Services Central as well. He does a lot of T-shirts. There's a lot of websites, DVD covers um, with us, and uh, featured over on uh, uh, some wrestlers that have been around and on some uh, some stuff. Uh, so go check it out, Alexander Cars K H R S dot media. Uh, and thanks, Alex, for supporting the show. Uh, so we have a few things coming up. I wanted to mention uh, we do have a lot of game stuff coming up we have game night coming up in the uh, in the studio here on the 19th this month you can join us at 7 p.m uh board game night specifically uh we had a hell of a turnout for jumanji last month <laughs> holy crap we had like 15 people here uh but we got a stack of board games come out we'll probably put on i feel like we're gonna put on the old ninja turtles movie or something uh just uh, something to play too also pittsburgh PodCon now going to be at the spirit lounge over in lawrenceville uh, on the 30th for International Podcast Day. Go look up the uh, the uh, uh, event over at the Sorgatron Media Facebook page for that. And also, next week, Crystal Grandy is going to be joining us. Uh, we did a project uh, called Web Thinger with her a little bit ago. She's done some work on some television shows on HGTV um, and uh, has her own media company. She's going to be hanging out with us next week uh, here on the show. So looking forward to that. Uh, Crazy Kraus on the Twitter. All the K's. All the K's. That's right. Anything else? Anything else you're looking forward? I'm sure you'll be uh, having commentary on whatever Apple does tomorrow. Oh, I'll be paying attention to Apple. I'll, actually, I'll be watching them all. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's part of what I do every day. So <laughs> it is. It is the homework, isn't it? Yes, it is. Absolutely. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Chillatech.net, John Chill on the Facebooks. Yeah, and of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. New podcast just spun up. Our friends at Pittsburgh Current just started one last week. If you want to find out the background on them, it's it's a newspaper startup at this point, and there's some really fun stories uh, with them uh, as a part of that. So check out the first ever Pittsburgh Current uh, podcast. I just got the news today. It's also on iTunes, so it is on all major podcatchers. So I'm going to give a shout out to those guys, and uh, we'll be doing that live here at 10 a.m. every Thursday um, on on their Facebook page. We'll be live streaming. So looking forward to see where we go with those guys and what they bring us every week as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, uh, Amanda, Dave, and everybody else that hung out throughout the night, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.